Hi guys, welcome back. Today I am filming a get unready with me. So this morning I actually filmed this makeup look. If you missed this video, I will have a link below. It's not your traditional makeup tutorial, it's a bit of fun. <laughs> Let's just say that. Really hoping you guys enjoyed it because it was a weird concept, but I had a lot of fun filming it. But I've been wanting to show you guys like my nighttime skincare routine and also like kind of how me and Alex have been really like chilling out in the evenings at the moment. So I thought I'd do a bit of a like nighttime routine, including my skincare, my nightly shower routine, etc. So if you're new to my channel and you enjoy beauty and lifestyle content, then definitely subscribe. And if you end up enjoying this video as well, a thumbs up really helps. It is only about 7 p.m. So I normally do this routine a little bit later, usually after dinner, but for the purposes of the lighting, I'm going to start by having my shower, taking off my makeup. I have a shower every single evening because I love going to bed clean. And then about twice a week, I'll have a morning shower where I like wash my hair and stuff. So I actually had a morning shower this morning and washed and styled my hair. So I'm just gonna tie it out of the way. So the first thing I do when I jump in the shower is take off my makeup using a face halo. So this is my favorite way to take my makeup off at night because it doesn't use any extra product, it just uses water. And I find it really, works well even if I've got a full face like this with red lippy and everything and then I clean it straight away using my bar soap so at the moment I'm using the Dove unscented bar soap and I find this really great at taking a lot of the stains out of the face halo and then I cleanse my face with the Soon Jung foaming cleanser I love this foaming cleanser because it's not stripping but it does a really good job of cleaning off any residual makeup or dirt on my skin and then I'll just clean my body usually using the Dove unscented soap as well although sometimes I opt for a special body wash if I'm feeling like treating myself <laughs> so now that I'm out of the shower I go in with my simple toner this is what I've been trying to use up recently I absolutely love the Soon Jung toner it's my favorite but and I have a backup I'm just trying to use up the rest of this simple one before I go back to my Soon Jung one I do think this is a really great toner for its price it's alcohol free fragrance free very gentle nice and hydrating and then straight after I've applied my toner I go in with a hydrating serum I've just switched over back to using the ordinary hyaluronic acid 2% plus B5 which is my favorite because I just finished up using this the Skin Diva 100% pure hyaluronic acid. This is a 1% formulation. This was nice. I wouldn't run out and rebuy it again. I like the one from The Ordinary better and it's a lot easier for me to get. I can literally walk down to Priceline and get it. So probably half a pipette worth. I think a whole pipette is a bit much. And I just massage it into my skin, which is still moist from my toner. Then I go in with a little bit of the benzoyl peroxide 5% gel. This is from the brand Galderma. I find this really, really great at helping to keep my like chin breakouts at bay. I do have a couple of teeny tiny small ones at the moment, but they're pretty minimal. I just find this stuff to be really effective. So even though I have, I'm not breaking out very much lately, I definitely feel as if it's possibly because of this product. Once I've applied that, I do wash my hands because I'm next gonna apply eye cream. So I don't wanna put like benzoyl peroxide in my eyes. And I'm gonna pop in with my eye cream. I'm currently using the Benefit It's Potent Eye Cream, which is something I used honestly like six years ago. Like this is such an old kind of product. It recently got sent to me, or probably got sent to me a few months ago, but it's been sitting in my skincare cabinet and I was very curious to try it again because as I say, I used to love this back in the day. It is just very hydrating, but I think I like the Bobbi Brown one more. It's just a little bit like, I don't know, I feel like it does a little bit more. This one is lovely, but isn't anything that special. I can't really attest to whether it actually gets rid of dark circles. That's what it claims to do. I don't really have major dark circles. I just have a bit of pigmentation around my cheeks, which actually the Drunk Elephant C Tango eye cream is the best thing for that, but I like using these kind of hydrating ones mainly in like the morning, but I'm just using them up at night at the moment. And then the next step is actually very exciting. So this year I'm on a bit of a retinoid journey and I'm actually filming it. I've been documenting my journey so far from January. Um, I need to do a March update actually. And I'm gonna do a video either at like six months or maybe at the end of the year. I haven't decided when I'll kind of stop the journey and talk to you guys properly about it, but I've introduced a very, very, very low strength retinoid. This is the Ordinary Grand Active Retinoid 2% in Squalane oil, which is equivalent to kind of like a 0.2% kind of retinol product. So it's very, very low strength. To be honest, I haven't noticed a heck of a lot of difference in my skin so far. I've been using it in January, I was using it twice a week at night. And then in February, I upped it to every second night. And then now March, I've gone up to every night. I haven't noticed a single bit of irritation, but I haven't really noticed 
dramatic results yet either so um, maybe my skin feels a little softer the next day that's the only thing I've really noticed but that could also be down to the squalane so I'm not 100% sure whether the retinol is doing a lot yet but my next month so in April I'm going to start introducing the 5% one twice a week so I'll still be using the low strength one most nights but then I'm going to slowly start switching over to a higher strength one we'll be able to see whether that produces any more dramatic results because at the moment like it's fine but it's nothing I'm not I'm not noticing anything adverse but I'm not also really noticing too much of a change but I will do an updated video on my journey with the ordinary retinoids for you guys once it's all ready to go in a few months and then my final step in my nighttime skincare routine is going in with an overnight mask. I love this one by Clinique. It's the Moisture Surge Overnight Mask. This is such a beautiful product. I find it really nice and nourishing, but it's not too heavy for my sort of normal to oily skin. Um, some night creams and stuff are way too rich for my sort of level of oiliness. But I find that this one is definitely a bit more sort of hydrating rather than oily but it's still like thicker than their gel cream say so I really like it for nighttime. I also think it applies really nicely on top of the retinol I haven't noticed any like inverse reactions or anything and I just feel like my skin yeah I just wake up the next day with such nice soft skin so this has been a favorite for a long time and I am probably I still have about a third of the bottle left like the stuff lasts ages because you get a hundred mils of product so I actually think it's really good value so that is my skincare routine all done I'm gonna jump into some loungewear and we're gonna head upstairs and have some dinner and watch a movie because since the world has gone into quarantine essentially. That is pretty much what me and Alex have been doing every evening. We'll make dinner, we'll snuggle up, watch a movie, and it's been really nice. Popped on one of my Mr. Morton merchandise sweatshirts. These pajama bottoms are from Lily Silk, and then these bad boys are my new pride and joy. They are little slippers from Emu Australia, and they are so comfy and cozy. I'll have them linked below but make sure you go a size up in them because they are quite small fitting um, and I don't even have a wide foot and I still needed to go a size up just to get them to fit nicely so yeah pro tip but they are divine I absolutely love them hi so this is our pantry I don't know if you've watched my videos for a long time you would have seen in here I've been doing quite a few posts on Instagram about not hoarding ingredients because it doesn't help anyone and so I was showing people like my pantry being like this is like a realistic pantry for two people and we've got a couple of cans of baked beans a bag of rice and a bag of like oats and a bag of sultanas yeah. under the stairs so That's they're nice. like our like ultra emergency so we're going to keep trying to cook like proper meals but if we manage to get if it gets so bad that it's like apocalyptic Oh, you want one more onion? Yeah, I can get that. I can get that in our onion box. And the uh, butter, please. Sure. But yeah, if it starts to get so bad that it gets like apocalyptic, we do have some basics, but just a few, you know, not like a whole trolley worth because I think it's smart to have a few extra supplies. They have been saying, you know, make sure you've got like sort of two weeks worth of food. I think we would literally, our pantries would be absolutely empty after two weeks if we had to survive with what we had, but we could probably do it. So what have we got? And this is this is inside our fridge. So like we got a few, you know, supplies. Look at me hoarding the pickle nays. <laughs> I'm like stop piling pickle nays. No, I'm kidding. I'm like, that one's like half empty. And yeah, in case we need to have a lot of fish and chips, we've just got this like really basic carbonara sauce that we're gonna finish off. Got half there and just some like beef ravioli this is not gourmet food but we need to eat up the fresh stuff before we eat any of the dried stuff and it was literally all that was available at the supermarket yeah it was all that was available so you know apocalyptic times the good thing is there's still so much ice cream because no one's hoarding that and the um cultured butter yeah thank goodness i know balanced meal. <laughs> we had vegetables at lunch time. Yes, we had that too. Thank you, yeah. it was pretty delicious. Thank you, you as well. Shit. Alrighty, so movie time. Specs time. <laughs> Watching movies every night has been part of our um, recent quarantine. 
<laughs> I've been waiting all day to say that. <laughs> so we've watched some really good ones, but one of them was not so good. We watched that yeah. um, Contagion. Contagion movie that everyone's been watching on YouTube movies. It was stressful. It, yeah, it's about a pandemic, but it's actually a really badly made movie. Like yeah, there wasn't wasn't, wasn't a well made movie, but. It was kind of intriguing because of the current situation, but I wouldn't recommend watching it for, for the fact that it's not a very good movie and also poor Alex is finally experiencing anxiety for like the first time in his life. I feel less anxious now that I'm eating. That's good. So yeah, we're gonna pick a movie, mm -hmm. eat our dinner or continue eating mm -hmm. as, as you were doing. And um, thank you so much for watching today's video, which was mostly a skincare routine with a little mini mini vlog added. <laughs> Very mini vlog. But on a serious note though, like stay safe out there guys. Do try and isolate as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.